Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got six fantastic independently published horror books to talk about. So one of the things I really love about the horror genre is the huge number of self-published and independently published authors who are, you know, writing books that really do continue to involve and improve the genre. Um, I don't think, I might be wrong, but I, don't, I can't think of another genre that has a, an active, a, as active a community of indie authors um, and indie publishers as horror does. I really do think it's one of the, the things that makes horror in you know in, in today's world um as fun and interesting and dynamic a genre as it is um so today i've got six books for you to talk about um some of which were sent to me by the authors some of which i've i've picked up for other reasons um but all of which i had a really great time with so they're all kind of horror or horror adjacent um and they are all definitely well worth your time in my opinion they're also i believe all available on kindle unlimited um so if you fancy uh, if you fancy trying one of them and you've got kindle unlimited you can you can try it for free um so let me talk through i'm going to uh, uh, so that i don't end up with a very very long video i'll just talk briefly about each one so a little bit about the plot and what i most liked about the book um, so let's start with this one. Let's start with Flesh Rehearsal by Brian Boyer. So Brian is a brilliant author. I really have enjoyed everything I've read by him. This is the third book I've read. He's he's at the more extreme end of the horror genre in terms of the, the stuff he writes about in his books and how graphic they get. But he doesn't linger um, sadistically on on the details of of the violence he's describing in in the same way that some extreme horror authors do. I th I think Brian is a very talented writer, and his books are just graphic and violent enough. So um, you know they they really make an impact on you, but you don't end up feeling like you've been you know dr <laughs> you've been dragged through a sewer or something like that. So flesh rehearsal is uh, in common with lots of Brian's books, has a, a quite a disparate group of characters who kind of all end up, their, their lives end up intertwining. There's loads of stuff going in in this book. There's a really creepy serial killer character called the Lobotomizer. Um, there's musicians, there's drug addiction, which is a, which is a common theme in his books. Um, but the thing that most impressed me about this book, and, and indeed about Brian's work generally, is he writes about a world which is kind of recognisable, um, but also feels slightly different from you know the real world. And it's really hard to pin down exactly what it is. But there's a there's kind of a nastiness, there's a, a desperation running through all of the characters in, in Brian's books. Um, which just kind of gets under your skin after a while and is really, really effective. One of the things he does brilliantly in this book as well is have, have scenes where you don't really know if um, if what you are reading is really happening or if it's a dream or a hallucination and things like that. And, and he plays that both ways. So there are scenes where things happen which seem so horrific they, that they could only be a hallucination which turn out to be real um, and scenes where horrific things happen but then the character realizes at the end that it was just a hallucination so really cleverly done i had a fantastic time with flesh rehearsal um moving on then um some more horror but one that is um definitely less graphic than flesh rehearsal but no less gripping uh, that's red alert uh, by r st clair so uh, r st clair is the host of the booktube channel regina's haunted library so a very um accomplished horror critic as well as a writer hello it's editing ollie here um apologies i actually got the name of the book wrong which is a terrible terrible thing for a book reviewer to do so sincere apologies to r st clair um, the name of the book is, of course, Code Red and not Red Alert, as I said in the video. Red Alert is a, is a kind of modern take on, on vampirism, um, but really, really entertaining. So set in um, West Virginia, so kind of in a rural area, um, and about a young woman called Bobby Jean, who's, you know, kind of very poor, down on her luck. Um, and um, is going through some kind of terrible stuff in her private life. Um, Bobby Jean works in a in a hospital, um, and there's a patient who's been brought into the hospital who, unbeknownst to everybody there, is actually a vampire. Um, and the book follows, um, you know, what happens in the hospital as the infection gradually spreads. Um, 
what I loved about this book was Bobby Jean is such a good central character. She's really sympathetic. You really care about her and you really want her to, to survive, um, which really ramps up the tension in the book. Um, and it's very nicely written as well in that the first half is has a really, really gradual build up. Um, it's all about, you know, kind of building up the characters and the situations and, and making you care about those characters so that when the action really hits in the second half, it has even more impact than it, than it would have done anyway. So a really, a really great book. Really had a good time with it. Um, Next up, we have uh, someone who lives a little bit nearer to me. So uh, David Sodergren, who lives at least in the UK, if, if not in uh, my end of the UK. Uh, so David's a, a Scottish author. Um, this book uh, of his, The Har, is I think the fourth or fifth book by him that I've read. Um, and again, I've had a really good time with all of them. So David is a huge movie fan. If you follow him on, um, on Twitter, he's constantly... Um, tweeting about films I've never heard of, like exploitation movies from the 70s and 80s in particular. And all of his books kind of use themes and things like that from horror movies um, to really good effect. So The Ha um, is about a fishing community um, in Scotland, uh, and particularly an elderly woman, Muriel, who lives there. Um, there's a developer who's, who's developing or trying to develop a golf course nearby who wants to take, take their land, basically, so kick them out of their houses and, and redevelop their land. Um, and it's about the Muriel and, and other people in the town trying to stand up against him. Um, but as you might have guessed from the cover, there's a there's a monster involved as well. So Muriel discovers this weird um, kind of amphibious creature um, with all sorts of strange powers. And, and the book, you know, follows the two of them um, through a, quite an incredible adventure. It's almost like a kind of really disturbing body, body horror um, version of E.T. or something like that. Um, but it works really Really, really well it's very very funny at times there's some great dialogue Muriel is a fantastic central character uh, and it's also quite moving um, as well as having some fantastically disgusting um, horror scenes so yeah definitely recommended um, something completely different uh, Out on a Limb by Louis Paredes uh, which is a novella um, and not the kind of thing I normally read. So this is probably more on the kind of dark or urban fantasy side of things than, than horror. But I really, really enjoyed this. So it's about a world where um, a strange event has happened uh, and, you know, various people have um, power, like supernatural powers as a result. Um, in this case, um, we follow two uh, occult detectives um, who are investigating a crime. And the book really nicely knits together um, that kind of um, you know mystery novel that I love. So the central mystery of this book is really, really engaging and interesting. Um, but you've also got these um, all these kind of weird characters dotted throughout it. Um, and the two central characters are, are no exception to that. So I had a really good time with this. It's very amusing at times, um, but it also has got a great imagination. Um, the world building in this book is excellent. It, you know, it's only um, like less than 100 pages long. And yet you start to feel like you're really getting a sense of this world that um, that Louis Paredes has, has created. And I'd certainly be interested to read more um, books in this series. Um, so yeah, really great characters, really great world building um, and a really good mystery at the heart of it as well. Okay, next up, something more at the thriller end of the horror spectrum, Engelstadt by Samuel Church, uh, which I found fantastically gripping. So this is a book about a group of film students from the USA who travel to this weird town called Engelstadt in Austria um, and get caught up with a neo-Nazi cult there. Um, so there's loads of great horror stuff in there, but at its heart, it's really kind of a survival thriller as these characters try and escape um, from these neo-Nazis. So really, really gripping. I had a great time with it. And it's got a really Really good central character as well who's got this kind of backstory involving a school shooting which which continues to impact him um, as the events of the book unfold so yeah a really really enjoyable and gripping read and then finally a book that I would struggle to call um, horror although it's definitely horror adjacent uh, and that's Skullface Boy by Chad Lutsky. Um, so this was a really sweet and charming book um, about a, a young guy, a teenager, um, whose, whose face is literally a skull, um, which I, I guess makes it horror adjacent, even though there's not really any horror in the book. Um, so it's about him going on a quest to find his father, so travelling across America um, to try and find his dad, who, who he's estranged from. Um, 
It was a really, really interesting and engaging and sweet book. I like books like this that, you know, just follow characters on a quest. And, and as he goes, he meets all these different characters along the way. Um, you get little snippets of their lives, which are always engaging and interesting and often quite amusing. Um, but the book had real heart as well. Um, and it was one of those books where while I was reading it, I kind of, I, I was enjoying it, but I kind of couldn't really figure out what the point of it was, um, if that makes sense. But having finished it, as a whole, I think it's just such a lovely and charming tale um, that I've, I've, I'm looking back on it with, with you know, genuine fondness. Um, I thought it was a really, really nice book. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you've read any of the books I talked about. Let me know if you've read any fantastic independently published horror novels recently. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.